Have you ever been or heard of an experimental town before? One where electricity and healthcare are free. A utopian society where human unity is at the center of what they do. A town with a giant meditation ball in the middle of it, bigger than a massive building, where people exchange services rather than cash, and people contribute towards the society in which they live in, where people are above politics, race, creed, gender, and everybody is treated equal. If you've never heard of Oroville before, or you've never been to Oroville before, then keep watching, because that's exactly where we're going now. It's about 45 minutes drive from here in Pondicherry, and we booked a night to stay there. I've got a feeling this is going to be very, very interesting, so let's go. We packed up the auto rickshaw, topped up on fuel, and wiped him down, using our tiny windscreen wiper for the first time, ready to take the journey to what sounds like paradise. Right, time to go. I've been running, I've been running like a fool Open my arms for you I was young, and that's what young people do Yeah, hey Liam! Yeah, I haven't done this in a couple of days, so it's, it's a bit frightening to be honest with you. I've also got a bit more of a relaxed approach to it as well. You know, after you've had a break from it for a while, after your first time. So I'm feeling sort of confident and nervous at the same time. You never get used to Indian traffic, ever. We set off and drove out of the calmness of Pondicherry and into crazy India once more. This is only Liam's third drive and he was concentrating like mad, but we would soon be arriving in Aeroville. Aeroville is a universal township in the making, preparing to home 50,000 people from around the world, but the population is currently just over 3,000 residents. In the mid-1960s, the concept of Aeroville was developed and put before the government of India, who gave their backing and took it to UNESCO, who passed on the unanimous resolution commending it as a project of importance to the future of of humanity. So we are actually in Oroville now and uh, we're heading to our guest house. So the main town is like about a five minute drive backwards that way but we're heading completely out in sort of the countryside to our guest house which is where near where the visitors centre is which is really handy because that's the first place I think we're going to go to. But anyway, first up, our accommodation. It's starting to feel a little bit more like a, like Oroville. It's gone from shop, 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 shop to trees, trees, forest, jungle. Feeling pleased to be out in the countryside, we made our way to our accommodation called Goodness Guest House. Interesting. <laughs> I'll leave it in gear so I don't um, roll backwards. Okay. I mean. There's, the ants on top. There's loads of ants all over the floor. Wow, this place looks really lovely. It looks really quiet and kind of serene with lots of trees and Buddhas about everywhere. Really, really. Is it is that Buddha Liam or Shiva? Buddha, right. Buddha, okay. We had no idea what to expect from a guest house in an experimental town, but first impressions is that it was actually really nice. A big building with a few rooms with balconies. The people were very friendly, especially the mother of the family who didn't speak a word of English. Okay, so this is what a room in a guest house looks like in Eraville. Nice room. Ooh, nice room. Good. Thank you, thank you. Oh yeah, oh thank you, thank you. Ah, beautiful. And the bathroom there, ah, oh, nice, it's good. Thank you, thank you, do a good job. Thank, thank you, you, thank you, thank you. So the bed is absolutely massive. It's like, it's huge, it's the biggest bed I've ever seen. So that's brilliant. Um, I don't think there's any hot water. Uh, I really like warm showers, so I'm hoping that there's at least like some kind of warmth coming through because if it's cold, oh, even in hot countries, I like a hot shower. But anyway, apart from that, um, we've got this gorgeous room, which is really nice and cool and airy and very, very clean, like really, really clean. And outside the front of our room, we've got like a lounge area with a bench and a place to sit down on the floor as well. If we decide to sit down on the floor and play a game of cards or something, it's just really nice. The best thing about this room is what I'm about to show you now.
first impressions is it's got like um might just be this guest house is our only experience of Auroville. But the people here are so nice, it's a really nice family. There's a daughter who is the one who checked us in, there's the mum who's the one who brought us into the room, who is so sweet. Mm -hmm. And I think the grand's living out in some sort of outhouse out there. And she's also very sweet as well. Aww. There's like a really nice family run sort of guest house. Really like it. Should we go and see what Arrowville's all about then? Yeah. Get some, get some, get some food as well. Aww. After dumping down our bags and securing a room for the evening, we headed into the centre of Aeroville to learn more about what it was all about, leaving our rickshaw Pete parked safely at the Goodness Guest House. Okay, so that's what our guest house looks like in Auroville, in this experimental, conceptual, sort of peaceful town. Very interesting, very, very nice people. Nothing sort of too crazy so far. So we're going to the visitor centre. There's a visitor centre up, uh, set up and it's going to give us a lot more information about the place. Before we do that, I'm so hungry, we're going to go nip into a cafe and see what a cafe is like in an experimental town and see if we can get any bloody plant-based food as well. Finding food, we soon saw that most of the food in Aeroville is organic, or at least tries to be. There was a lot of Western food on menus, along with some Indian food also. Aeroville is only self-sustainable in milk and seasonal fruits and currently grows 50% of its needed fruit and veg requirements. But apparently this is something they're working on improving. People who live in Aeroville contribute towards the town in their specific way and each month get given a maintenance allowance on their Oro card, which is like a debit card with apparently enough on it for one to live a simple but dignified life. As always, Liam wanted to check that the water we were drinking was clean and safe to drink. Noticing, in fact, that it was dynamised water, which means that not only has it been cleaned and filtered, but it's also been positively energised using methods that potentially could include someone meditating on the water and sending it positive energy before it is drunk. We passed through the visitors' centre on the way to the main attraction of Auroville, the centre of the whole town which is called the Matramande, the soul of the city. This giant gold golf ball shaped building took 30 years to build. It's a huge sphere surrounding by 12 petals. Inside the sphere is a large white meditation chamber and the world's largest crystal glass globe used to suffuse electronically guided sunlight which comes through the apex of the sphere. Unfortunately we weren't allowed to see inside the Matramandir today as you must book a visit days in advance. As the sun set we went back to our guest house which seemed very quiet and peaceful at night so we played a new card game we had found and went to bed. Morning. Good morning. How are you doing this morning? I'm okay. I had a good night's sleep. It's asleep in the jungle. It really feels like we're sleeping in the jungle, doesn't it? Yeah. It does. This bed is like a proper Indian bed. It's massive, like bigger than two singles put together, but it's rock hard, <laughs> like rock hard. And the pillows are so thin as well. So, I'm, and to be you, after riding in that rickshaw where I'm hunched over a little bit because I'm too big for the bloody thing, um, it's not bad. It's gonna work. It's, it's gonna... quite nice to have a hard bed, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And the sounds of the jungle in the evening and um, not no mosquito bites. Happy days. I'm alright with that. And you get breakfast here as well. I'm hungry. And on that note, we went for our free breakfast, which consisted of coffee and dosa with a peanut chutney and a grain and veg dish, which we believe is called pongal. Peanut. Peanut. Oh wow. One day coconut, one day peanut, one day tomato, one day like Mmm, a... that's really amazing. good. Amazing. Yeah. Peanut chutney and a masala dosa. Yeah. Lovely. That's amazing. After some deep conversations with the owner about Auroville, offering insights and humour, we had to check in to another guest house as this one was full again today with pre-bookings. That was a good guest house. I'll leave the link in the description to it. It's called Goodness Guest House. It cost 1,600 rupees, which is about 16 quid. Um, it's Aeroville is quite a sought after place to stay in. I'm surprised we've got a, um, a room for the evening. That's one of the cheaper rooms in um, in Aeroville. You could pay a lot more than that, so just be, be careful. They're so busy, 
that we've got no room for us tonight so we're going over the road to another guest house but check-in's not for a little while yet so whether we can check in early or we have to go somewhere else first but we just want to see one last little snippet of Araville so we can make up our full minds about the place before we leave but right now we've got to get out of here this next place is called Green's Guest House and costs 2,200 rupees but has a pool which is a huge bonus either way it's slim pickings as it's the busiest time of year so this is what another guest house looks like in Araville we have a very clean room with another huge bed, a fan and aircon, and a cute quirky bathroom with a shower. This has got to be the quirkiest accommodation that we've had yet. They've got a brick wall for the bathroom with a tiled, the actual terracotta tiles for the top of the bathroom. It's amazing. It's literally a brick house. I think we'll leave that there. We decided to go and look for the Oroville Beach on our newly bought rickshaw called Pete. Oroville is a town on 20 square kilometres of land and en route to the beach we observed Oroville shops selling all sorts of essentials and crafts, medical centres, tradespeople, gardens, bakeries and lots of cafes and restaurants. It was hard for us to turn down eating western food as Liam's belly was still a little sensitive. We eventually found the beach. So we're at Oro Beach and it's very very much an Indian beach. Not westernised at all, which is good because we're in India, right? But what you find with Indian beaches, what we found is that the sand is so freaking hot. Even if you're wearing flip-flops, it seems to melt the flip-flops. And my flip-flops are going through hell at the moment. Like I need a new pair big time. I've had them for years. The sea's got a uh, sort of a cross current going across it. So it's quite dangerous to swim in. Um, so it's, and there's no shade. <laughs> so it's not somewhere that we're gonna be spending very long, but very interesting to see. Um, but Oroville comes right to the coast here. So um, if you wanted to join the Oroville community of 50,000 people or going up to 50,000 people, then you could go right by the beach and get yourself a nice spot on this beach if you want it. I went for a wonder whilst Liam stayed in the shade with the tuk-tuk. It was here that I realised that I felt like Oroville was a bubble and down here on the beach I had just left that bubble and I was back in India again. As I was walking across the hot sands, I met two lovely people who wanted a selfie with me. After a short time, someone else came over and wanted a selfie also. Then another two people came over to see what was happening. Then another two people, then some more. Until I was completely surrounded by people all wearing red and wanting a photo with me and curious as to who I was and what I was doing in India. It was pure chaos, but also pure kindness. As a foreigner, you couldn't ask to be made to feel more welcome. And that goes for pretty much every Indian we have met so far. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Mother, nice to meet you. Uh, thank you. One photo with one person turned into having one photo with about a million lovely people on the beach. Oh my god. I literally left Liam to take a picture of the sea and I've been gone for quite a while now so I'm going to head back. So we left the beach again and headed back to Oroville Centre. On the way, Liam managed to, rather than throwing them away, get his flip-flop fixed by a tradesman for 20 rupees per shoe. Bargain. We even tried to gate crash an Orovillian event involving sound therapy, but there were too many people so a third of us were rejected. Oroville has many spiritual events, workshops and classes on each day, and there is even a free cinema showing independent films from around the world. Cool, we've just come back to the guest house for a quick shower because it's, you know, tropical heat. And now we're about to go and end our Oroville experience by going somewhere really special. And we've both been looking forward to this for the whole time we've been here. So let's go. So off we went on our final Oroville adventure, popping in the rickshaw and heading on a 10 minute drive down the road. So we're on our way to our location that we're really excited about. Where we're going requires lots of mosquito repellent, lots of it. And this is what we're using, it's incognito, which it actually really works out here. We've got to catch a bus to where we're going which is a lot better than what than taking this because i don't think this will get us there so the bus is going to take us and i think that might be in the first case scenario safer and better we boarded the old indian bus which was rammed full of people that would take us to the famous sadhana forest on a very special evening sadhana forest is another social experiment within auroville but with a slight twist so we've just arrived at sadhana forest which is a completely plant-based community living in the jungle. 
and uh, they've got a really, really important mission out here, and that is, that's how we're ending our Auroville experience. So we heard about these guys even back in England and we've just arrived. We're heading in there now. I'm really excited to be here um, and we're straight away. We're right in the forest and yeah, they're a completely vegan community of people living in the forest. Um, and check out behind me all of their accommodation and huts and the toilets behind me there. It's really exciting. Sedana Forest is a community of people who live in huts and trees in the jungle. They are completely vegan and spend all their time planting trees in areas of drought and conservation of water. Their mission is very special as the work they are doing affects us all on planet Earth. Each Friday, the Sedana community invite people from the outside into the forest for talks and tours, films and food all for free. In fact, anyone could go to Sedana at any time and be welcome to stay. What was impressive to us was how selfless the community was. They weren't asking for anything but were only trying to give back. After an initial welcome and talk we were shown the different ways that the Sedana community lives sustainably in the jungle. Nothing goes to waste. All water gets recycled and food is cooked on rocket burners which uses far less fuels than other methods. They only cook and eat communally. All food waste is used for compost, cow or dog feed and all human waste is used as manure to plant trees. They all live in sustainable huts using fallen wood or dead trees and some of the roofs were made out of recycled plastic mulch from litter. They even had an animal sanctuary on site with some beautiful cows. Whereas Auroville is about human unity, Sedana appeared to be about human unity as well as unity with animals and the environment in which we live. We watched documentary style films about the work Sedana is doing and the impact it's having. In many places through techniques used, Sedana has managed to raise the water table by a number of meters on what was completely decimated land that no trees could ever survive. The food came out and served to the 150 odd people. It was delicious and based only on whole foods. Nothing is processed and little oil is used and of course nothing is wasted. Sedana is a way of life. They care deeply about changing the world for the better but with no religious dogma, just taking action compassionately. What's remarkable is anyone can go and join the community of selfless and kind volunteers right now if they choose. As their projects are so successful but they need more hands on deck. It was clear to us from the evening that Sedana wasn't just about planting trees but more a lifestyle of living in harmony with nature and they seem to be having fun doing it too. Good morning. We got back quite late last night. Oh, don't drive on Indian roads at night time. That bus journey was quite scary. <laughs> but what an evening. We are going to be leaving this Auroville area soon, but that Sedana Forest last night was the perfect way to end it. It was just so, so good. And how we feel about the place is it's definitely got something about it here. We could spend a long time here probably. Uh, whether we think it's going to work for them, I don't know. We wish them all of the best, the people in Auroville. But I do think that the people at that Sedana Forest, which seemed like separate to Auroville, even though it's part of Auroville, it seems separate because they even called it more of a social experiment, what they were doing. Really putting out so much more into the world than they're taking back because we've done that for such a long time. And it's worked so well that they're setting different stations up around the world with this whole sort of peace movement around it. People living living sustainably, planting trees every day, eating whole food plant-based diet, not taking from the world, water conservation. It was inspiring. It was actually heartwarming as well. We've taken a lot from it. If we had a bit more time on our hands, in, we pr in fact, we probably would come back and volunteer with them because they're just, it's just, the, it's just a nice environment. The, probably the best way I've seen to live so far uh, in my 37 years of living. Anyway, enough about that. This has been a really interesting part of the journey, but next time we are going to be taking our rickshaw out of this bubble that we're in, and it is a bubble, and going back into India. And we're doing, we're going to, it's going to be the start of our trip, really. We're going to be hitting those really big, long journeys, dangerous roads. We're going to be trying to get ourselves down to the most southerly tip of India. It's a long, long, long journey in an engine that's just a two-stroke engine. So wish us luck, and if you like the content, please do subscribe, and we'll see you next time. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun.
We know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the few